75 years ago tomorrow, Monsignor Wagner celebrated Mass for the very first time at St. Walter's Parish. And what a wonderful thing that he, they, chose to celebrate that very first Mass on All Saints Day. What, what, what a wonderful thing, because think about it. All Saints Day is the day that we just don't recognize one of our particular saints, like St. Walter or the many saints that we have, but we take time to remember all the saints, the saints who are canonized and the saints who aren't officially recognized by the church. Because the church knows that there's been good people out there living the gospel of the Lord in very quiet and humble ways, living lives that are holy, exemplary. And today we recognize and we celebrate them too. There just might be some saints sitting here in this community today as we celebrate 75 years. Celebrating 75 years, we do basically three things. We take time to remember the past, celebrate the present, and hope for the future. All three pieces are necessary when you have a celebration like that, like this. We, we remember the past. So we go back to that time of Monsignor Wagner and the, the founding parishioners and those who sacrificed so much to help this parish be built and to grow, to become joyful disciples. We celebrate all those people and remember them, both living and dead, who have brought the light of Christ forward in a real way at this particular parish. So we remember them. We remember the parish. We remember all the good that has happened here. But it can't end there. We also celebrate the present. And as Catholics, how do we celebrate the, the present? We celebrate with a mass. We celebrate with the Eucharist. The word Eucharist is a Greek word and it means to give thanks. So every time we gather around the altar for the holy sacrifice of the mass, we are giving thanks to God. So today, in a special way, we pause together as a community to thank God for our faith, to thank God for our priests and deacons and staff and volunteers and our fellow parishioners, to thank God for all the good that has happened here at St. Walter's. But it doesn't end there either. We also hope for the future. If it were just ending today, then we locked the doors and that was it, and said, oh, that was a good run. There'd be a sadness, kind of a tragedy today. But we don't. We look forward with faith and hope to our future, saying that we are committed to making sure that the light of Christ continues to shine in this particular parish. Just a little while ago, I was, um, I was reading a short story. It was by a, a woman who owns a small shop in a college town. And she and her husband owned this store, and they always loved Saturdays when there was a football game. Because one, it brought a lot of life and a lot of people out, but two, it also brought them a lot of business. So they loved those football Saturdays at the college town. A few years ago, she wrote that they had a game. In the late morning, there was a group of students that were kind of coming down and passing by her shop. They were loud, they were boisterous, probably started celebrating a little bit too much too early. <laughs> And somehow they stopped in front of her, their house and they were having an argument, a debate with each other, talking about all these shops and debating whether the windows were shatterproof or bulletproof. Some of them said, no, they're, they're not, they're just normal windows. And others, of course they are, they, they have to be, you know. So they're going back and forth. 
So one of these students, to prove he was right that these are shatterproof windows, found a brick, picked it up, and threw it through her window. <laughs> Crashed. The, the whole thing just shattered. With that, the students ran and scattered. She picked up the phone. She called the local glass door window shop. They said, we can have someone out there in the next hour. Two repairmen showed up. What they did was they first measured her window, called the measurements back into their shop to see how quickly they could replace it. And then, after they did that, they helped her. They took a broom, her vacuum, all the things, and started the very hard task of getting all the glass out of the store. They worked a long time. Finally, they got back into their car, came back. They had a window the size she needed, and they installed it right there on that day. She said while she lost all of her morning and early afternoon business, she still had her doors open in the late afternoon and in the evening. Here was her point, and I thought it was very well made. The next day in the newspapers and all over the internet, everything was about the students who broke the window. It was all about them, how terrible this is, what were they thinking, are they going to be caught, who's going to be held responsible. It was a big story, it was on the headlines in this town, and, uh, and that was it. But as she commented on it, she says, this is the type of world that we live in. We pay so much more attention to the window breakers instead of the repairmen and the repairwomen. Isn't that true? The bad stuff gets the headlines so often. In a shop like that, in the church, and in the world. But behind the scenes, with all the window breakers out there doing whatever bad they do in the world, there's also a huge group of people who oftentimes go unsung, who are the repairmen and women. They're the ones who pick up a broom and help. They're the ones who say, how can we make this better for you? And they do it oftentimes without a lot of fanfare. This is what we celebrate on All Saints, that there's good people in our church and our world who really have reflected that holiness of Christ in unsung ways. And we should take time to remember them and celebrate them, especially on the day we call All Saints. As I conclude, and as you move forward as a parish, how do you continue on joy joyful discipleship? How do you continue to become a saint in your own way, one of those unsung repairmen or repair women. How do you do it? The blueprint is given to us today in the gospel. It's by living a life in which we love God with all of our minds, all of our hearts, and all of our souls. And we love our neighbor as ourselves. So today, as we remember the past, celebrate the present, and hope for the future, together, may St. Walters continue to celebrate 75 years and beyond as a parish who puts the gospel into practice as unsung heroes, unsung saints, unsung repairmen, and repair women by loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves.